20th century, a chef called Auguste Escoffier formalized French cuisine and created what's now known as, as haute cuisine. A very upmarket style of cooking and eating uh, for the elite and that manifests itself in high-end hotels and restaurants. Many consider this to be the birthplace of, of the modern kitchen. However, this style neglected a lot of regional character. Uh, and due to the high labor content of, the, of delivering this style of food, it was quite unattainable for the domestic kitchen. Now, Haute Cuisine's laborious uh, preparation methods and kitchen practices still form the basis of most formal Western cookery training and culinary institutions around the globe, with students working their way through all of the French classics from roux and butter sauces to ballantines and poached whole salmon with all the fiddly vegetable decorations on the top and so forth. While larger formal kitchens such as hotels, cruise boats and fine dining restaurants are able to sort of charge enough money or offset the, the high staffing costs with other offerings like accommodation and, and entertainment, most smaller operations or less formal uh, restaurants still adhere to a similar structure. It's just thinned down a little bit. For example, a larger hotel brigade would have a chef de cuisine or a head chef at, right at the top, just mostly occupied with planning, paperwork and, and menu planning. In service, he'd be running the pass, which is the transition between the kitchen and the wait staff, where the food's all laid out, finished and checked before it gets sent to the restaurant. It's the sous chef or the second chef who's in charge on the ground, in the kitchen, making sure that all the sections of the kitchen are heading in the right direction. The actual work is done by each section. It's split up. Now, each section has a chef de party who's in charge of the section. And in a large kitchen brigade, those sections would include the saucier for the stocks and sauces, and sauteing, and poissonnier for cooking the fish. The entremetier is the guy who does all the veg prep. The rotisseur is for roasting meat. Criadon is for all of the grilled food. The fruitier does the fried food. The garmanger does the cold preparations and salads. The pâtissier or the pastry chef does all the desserts and pastries, a boulanger for the baking, boucher or the butcher for the primal sort of meat preparation. And each of these sections would then have a second in charge, who's the demi-chef de party. Depending on the size of the section and the size of the operation, there'd be a number of commie chefs as well. And they, they do all the crappy jobs. Not to forget the most important person in the kitchen, the plonger, the kitchen porter, or the, or the dishwasher in English. Okay, so it's really easy to see with all of those sections how a kitchen brigade can quickly become 30 or 40 people. And in some fine dining establishments, that may be just to feed 50 diners. So it's quite elaborate. Now in the late 60s, there was another big shift in French cuisine known as Nouvelle Cuisine, or the New Cuisine. So ironically, this term's been used a few times in history, um, and it was even used in the 1890s to describe Escoffier's as haute cuisine. Anyway, this nouvelle cuisine was a healthier, lighter, simplified style of cooking that made recipes more attainable for the home cook and, and easier for chefs. Nouvelle cuisine was a lot less heavy and rich than haute cuisine. It used a lot less cream and flour and the sauces and a lot less butter, more olive oil and it focused on fresh, vibrant ingredients with an emphasis on beautiful presentation and, and really highlighting the ingredients on the plate instead of drowning them and masking them in, in heavy sauces. It also saw a big shift back to highlighting regional ingredients and it was quite an exciting time for, for dining out in France. The other effect that Nouvelle Cuisine had was on the restaurant kitchen. It meant that things could be simplified and run more cost effectively. A brasserie or a gastropub style of operation could condense this traditional kitchen framework down and use a lot less chefs. Now there could be hundreds of ways to set up a, a kitchen depending on what the needs were, what style of restaurant was. Generally, you'd probably have a setup where the head chef was also the grill chef and the roast chef and the sauce. So he's doing all of the cooked meat and sauce. The sous chef probably is running a section as well and maybe he's doing the fish. And the veg guy would also be doing all the fried foods and hot starters and things like that. And the pastry chef and the cold section, the salads and cold starter section would probably be run by one guy as well. And then the KP would be there to do everything else. There's a lot more crossover between the sections depending on the physical layout of the kitchen. 
and of the restaurant. Most of the restaurants that I've run use this kind of setup. With a small team of four or five chefs, you're able to knock out a couple of hundred covers a night. Now, although that's quite a lot of work and you're always busy in a kitchen, it's strangely the same amount of workload for a chef working in a formal restaurant um, that might have 20 chefs serving 45 diners. So I hope that's been useful. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you've got any questions or comments, we'd love to hear your feedback in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. See you soon.